hands in closure. Here, wrists and cigarettes. I'll just try and um, do this with one hand. I've been given some very lively food today, and uh, it's very likely to <laughs> run away from me. But I'm sure the meerkats will uh, be absolutely fine with it. Now, these sort of little animals I've called, called meerkats. They've got nothing to do with cats. As you can see, they don't look at all like cats. Instead, they've got long, pointy faces and uh, long, slender bodies as well. And that might give away that they are indeed in relation to the mongooses. Now, unlike the mongooses, these are only found in one part of the world, namely the Kalahara Desert of Southern Africa. And when you live in the desert, you have to be able to eat pretty much anything you come across. And that's exactly what meerkats do. In the wild, they feed on everything from small mammals and birds, eggs, scorpions even, um, fruits and vegetables, roots and shoots, you name it, and they will eat it. Here at the zoo, you'll see, I'm feeding them with crickets or locusts here, um, and of course we feed them all sorts of other things like mealworms, fruit, we give them a special meerkat pellet so we're sure they get everything they need, um, and we feed them eggs a few times a week as well. And as I say, they are actually immune to the, the um, poison of scorpions, which is a very neat adaptation to exactly be able to eat pretty much everything you come across. Now, not only that, you'll see they're very social, although they are not too happy about competing for the food here. Um, they are very social, and that's very important indeed, because meerkats do need to... Um, <laughs> They do need to work as a team. I don't know much about football, but I do know that if each player doesn't do his bit, they will get absolutely nowhere. And that's the exact same thing with our meerkats here. They do not only work together as such, but they all have different roles and, um, and tasks to do. So when the food runs out here, you will see that one of them, in particular the big male, will get on the big um, stop here in the middle and he'll run up there and be what is called the sentry duty. He will look into the sky for aerial predators and down to the ground for any terrestrial predators that might be um, around to threaten his family. You've still got your mouth full of food, little one. I think it's time to let the other ones have some. Now, not only that, um, the sentry duty is of course very, very important um, to make sure that the family is surviving. Now, another role is of course foraging. And these guys here might look a little bit bigger than the ones you might have seen on TV, um, but generally they don't store body fat at all. It's a bit like otters, so they're very dependent on foraging a little bit throughout the day. So that's why we feed them throughout the day, and in the wild they'll feed or forage all the way throughout the day. Now, the mums out there will obviously know that foraging or cooking and shopping is not easy when you have little ones um, to look after at the same time. And in a meerkat group, it's actually only the dominant female, or the queen if you like, that is allowed um, to actually breed. Now, if any of the subordinate females, <laughs> if any of the subordinate females breed, she will actually, the dominant female will actually kill off the young. And it sounds extremely harsh, but at the end of the day, you can't really all of them um, breed because, of course, there won't be enough food to support any of them. Um, so that's how it works. So in, when the supporting or the dominant, sorry, when the dominant female has her babies, the other females will actually look after them for her. And not only babysit, they've taken it to an extreme level, really. They will also lactate. So even though they haven't been physically pregnant themselves, they will actually produce milk for the female's baby um, or babies to feed on. So they, they do really work as a team, um, and not only that, they will also teach their babies um, different things. So most animal babies will just look at their parents doing things um, and try and copy something um, random, but if it doesn't work, they just do something else. Now these guys here actually t are taught from um, the adults how to, for instance, remove the stinger of a scorpion, although they're immune to the poison, it's probably not nice being stung by one. Um, and therefore, they are really rather, um, really rather exciting little things in terms of behavior. But when you look at them, you can see they have a lot of physiological adaptations to their lifestyle as well. The long slender bodies, of course, enable them to go into their burrows really rather quickly. They're almost on cue, on cue there, up on central duty, looking out. Now, if he does see anything that might be of danger, he'll give a little alarm call that we can barely hear, but these guys here will hear it immediately, and they will all hurry down on the ground. Um, obviously, they've got slender bodies to allow them to do that. They've got long claws. If you get a 
a closer look at them. Look at their claws. They're really good at digging, of course, their burrows, but also climbing and digging for the, the roots and insects that they like to eat as well. Now, the long tails are mainly for balance. You can see if he didn't have his tail there, he would be falling down immediately. And you'll see on his back, there's a lovely pattern of brown spots. Now, that pattern obviously serves well for camouflage, but actually, it is a unique print on each individual, so they can recognize each other. It's a bit like a fingerprint. Now, personally, I couldn't tell they were past at all, except from size difference, but in fact, they, it, has, it has been proven that they are um, individual prints. Now, if you were in the Kalahari Desert and you had to sit like that and stare straight into the sun to see if any um, birds of prey were coming your way, what would you, would you like to wear on your eyes, do you think? Sunglasses, isn't it? Of course, he has to look straight into the sun in the desert, midday. And if you look at them closer, you will see that black stripe or band across the face is actually nature's own version of sunglasses. You find it in other animals as well. You find it in the lemurs, for instance, that are also very dependent on being able to look into the sky. I see trees of green 